I made mistakes setting up this fishing kayak that cost me several hundred dollars. Let me share what I did right and what I did wrong in this video. Stay tuned. Welcome back. If you're new to the channel, we cover kayak modifications, spin, and fly fishing. So poke that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Demo versus owning. That's the issue. You can go on a demo, get a feel for the kayak, but until you own it and set it up for the way you fish and where you fish, you can make a host of mistakes. And one of the mistakes I made cost me a couple hundred bucks, and I'll get to that in a minute. So what I want to do on this Jackson, and it can really be any kayak, but I bought the Jackson, let me take you from front to back and walk through how I set this up after using it for probably a hundred hours to maximize my fishing experience. So let's jump into the front and there we got to talk about the stand-up assist rope. I've got a video on the stand-up assist rope that I'll link up in the description but the bottom line is you need one of these to help you get in and out of your kayak even if you don't intend to ever stand up and fish in it. So what I did is I made a loop attached to PVC because you need to be able to grip this and I attach it to the front of my kayak with a carabiner. And I use the carabiner also to attach to my kayak cart. So it serves two purposes. So this is the first thing you need to add to your kayak. Let's get into the bow hatch and how I have it set up. The first thing I did is I bought a tray that would fit into the top. Hopefully your boat came with a tray because you need a tray to be able to get in and out of the stuff you use all the time. Then, down below, you need to make sure it's got enough room to hold everything you don't want to access 100% of the time. The first thing I've got in mind is my dollar store fish bag. Video in description. This works great and I've stuffed redfish sized up to 25 inches in here with uh, some ice packs, no problem. Then, to keep the stuff from sliding down in the hollows that run down the side of the kayak, I've got a dollar store laundry bag, and in that I've got my wet weather gear, uh, a uh, vest to make me more visible on the intercoastal, and a few other things, my spare rod and reel. Also in here, I've got my safety gear in this bag. So I had to make sure that this Jackson would fit all this stuff and in the tray, I've got my rag, you know, because it does get sweaty out there. Uh, spare radio, GPS, some things like that. What you put in here, I always put my lunch in here. What you put in here is really up to you. But make sure the bow hatch has enough room to hold all your stuff. Moving back. Another important hack on a heavy kayak is getting additional leverage points when you're loading and unloading the boat. And so I created a simple PVC cord right here connected to a carabiner that I run through my scupper hole and that allows me to reach back and grab in the front and then right here and it's much easier to move the kayak. Here's my first mistake that cost me some money. My Jackson came with the Ramrod 2007 that you see right here and I just assumed that it would be perfect for this kayak. So I bought another one. Waste of money, as you'll see in the other video that I link up below. But the bottom line is that it sits too low to the gunnel. Look how far back the butt of this rod sticks. And this is not a huge rod. It gets all in the way. So avoid this and go with the alternative that I eventually selected. So the solution I found that was best for me was to go with the Ram Tube Junior because it has an elevated profile, my rod will fit in there, I can put it on either side and keep the reel on the outside of the kayak where it doesn't interfere with me on the inside and the butt is away from my, my legs. I just find this one is a lot easier to use and much more convenient. So when you're in the store and you're checking out your kayak or you're evaluating rod holders, mount them to your model of kayak and see how they fit with a rod. The next issue is where to put your fish finder if you use one. 
When I use the fish finder, I take out one of my rod holders and basically just use the flush mount in the back. So this is the Helix 7, and I mount the transducer in the front, so the transducer is away from the turbulence created by the propeller or my paddle. Now, I decided not to mount this permanently, and what I do is I just run the transducer cable up into my front hatch, and there's enough slop in here to where I can shut the uh, bow hatch, and it's not going to fall out. Then, with the battery cable, I just run that around to the back, and I put the battery in a dollar store box to keep it dry, and put that behind my seat. The other fish finder I use when I don't need the expanded capabilities of the Helix is the deeper unit and I just attach that right here in front of my rod holder and pull it down. If you like having one of these Orion cup holders, I decided to mount the holder part down here on the bottom of my kayak. There's a utility track that the seat rolls on because that way it's out of the way as opposed to being up here sitting on this utility track where it's going to get in the way of my rod holders. Now if you do this, this cup does not come with drain holes on the bottom, so you be sure you drill a couple holes in the bottom because water is for sure going to get in here and you want it to be able to drain out. But having that right there is perfect. It doesn't get in the way at all. So here's a good DIY that I added to this kayak. This is my tool caddy for my knife, scissors, and pliers. And all it is is a piece of PVC trim with Velcro attached and I just loop the Velcro over the tools. And I've got a video showing this and another option to do the same thing that I'll link up in the description. But this is critical. When I'm sitting here in the seat, it's nice to be able to just get at this stuff without having to dig around or reaching back. So where do you put your measuring device? This is my bump bar and I attach this to the side of my seat by just grabbing a couple pieces of Velcro and looping them through the bar on the seat and now that holds that in there uh, nicely. I can rotate this up if I need to get down to anything that's in this part of my seat area. The next thing I did is I added one of my rig racks here and basically all this is is one of my uh, gear heads and you attach that to the utility track with an elbow piece of another piece of PVC wrapped in a pool noodle and now I've got something I can put used rigs on so they don't go back into my tackle box wet as well as any rigs that I intend to use when I'm out fishing. They're here and immediately accessible. Again, video on this in the description. Another setup hack you may want to do is go out and buy one of these Thermarest pads to fit right here in your seat. I find that it's makes it very comfortable to have that lumbar support uh, when you're pedaling. The next setup hack is a variation on that toolbar. I wanted a place to put my Procure Sense where I didn't have to dig for them here under the seat in my tray. So I created another PVC uh, back plate, screwed this into the kayak, and then looped some fabric around to hold my Sense. Again, video on that is in the description. One of the things every setup needs is an anchor trolley. Either buy a commercial one like this or follow any of the do-it-yourself instructions you can see here on YouTube. With the anchor trolley, you need to have some kind of a cleat that will allow you to release the anchor quickly when you get in trouble, either with a fish or an obstruction or something like that. A lot of people make the mistake of tying the anchor directly to the ring, and that's incorrect because you can't get get it loose. And you'll see that you can see the detailed video I did on this uh, down in the description. But with a cleat, you can stick it on the cleat, and now it's easy to unravel if you get in trouble, and it goes away. Now with that. You also need to make a float that attaches to your anchor line. That way you can go back and retrieve the anchor later once the problem has been resolved. We all know noise scares fish. So I wanted to have a silent way to store and deploy my anchor. 
and that's why I created this PVC T with the pool noodle section to where I can put the anchor on there silently. Now, the other trick here is I'm using a dive reel to be able to control my line, and I've got just a little hook right here into a cap to hang that on there. And this goes in and out very easily on one of the PVC gearhead adapters that I talked about in a different video. While we're back here, let's talk about where you're going to put your paddle. In a pedal kayak, you don't have too many options. You can stick it in the pedal park if you have one of those in the front, but that's actually going to get in the way when you, you pedal. You can run it down the side of your kayak, but then that might get in the way of your anchor and your anchor trolley. So I, I know some people even <laughs> stick them back here in the flush mount rod holders, and they're sticking up in the back. So what we did is we got a couple paddle clips, engineered them just like we did the PVC gearhead adapter, and now we can stick the paddle in here, put it horizontal to the water to minimize wind resistance, and this becomes a very nice and convenient way to store it. You know, you can adjust the angle here if you want, and you can move this, since this clip is really good, it's not moving. You can move this as far back as you need to. Let's talk about your rear storage compartment. This can really be noisy. You know, when you've got stuff back here sliding around, it makes a lot of noise, scares fish. So what I recommend you do is you go get basically just a doormat, cut it to fit, and you can put that back in here. And now, even if you don't have my anchor hanger, you know, if you're careful, you can put your anchor back here uh, very silently. Now for the big argument. Do you use a milk crate or not? You know, all fishing kayaks have room in the back where a milk crate will fit in there nicely. And you can pack that full of a lot of stuff. And I've got some videos in a playlist on how to create a nice custom milk crate, even with a shelf up here on the top. But I decided not to use the milk crate because I realized that last year I was taking too much stuff with me. So now I've got everything down to this very small toolbox which will fit in uh, nicely right here along with my bait bucket which sits in back of my seat because I fish with live mullet here in the inshore quite a bit. And so far after maybe a uh, hundred hours of trips this has been just fine for me. And if you use a bait bucket then I strongly recommend you put a little air hose in there to one of these air stones that you can get in any pet store for an aquarium and I run mine to a small aerator that I've got hooked up here on the back of my seat and now when I'm moving all I do is hook that up turn on the aerator and now I've got air going into my bait and keep it a lot you still got to dunk them you know every five to ten minutes or so depending on how many you have in the bucket but this is a great way to one keep the aerator dry and keep your bait alive. Now let's get to the multiple hundred dollar mistake that I made when I set up this kayak. If your boat's heavy you're going to want to have some way to get it from your vehicle to the water and for me I decided to go with the boondocks landing gear because the, the uh, shaft here was going to be high enough to keep my rudder from dragging on the ground when I put it on and off my truck. But the mistake I made was buying these wheels, the normal skinny wheels. I should have bought the big old fat wheels. And the reason was I never thought that I'd be running across sand. When uh, I was talking to the vendor about this, the comment was beach. Well, there are a lot of places where the grass is soft, you hit mud, things like that where these have become a godsend. And I ended up paying an extra, probably almost $250 to replace these wheels and shaft with the fat wheels and the longer shaft. So please think about where you're gonna wheel your kayak if you're gonna buy boondocks or any other kayak cart because many of them come with the fat wheels that make it easier to go across soft ground. Something I forgot to mention outside that's important with these boondocks is I've seen people commenting 
that the pressure on the two bolts right here causes some kayaks to crack. Now I don't think that's going to be a problem on my kayak because I've got the boondocks mounted so far to the rear that the entire weight of this heavy boat isn't going to be on these wheels. But risk mitigation is always important. So that's why I installed a couple big slabs of HDPE above and below to give a little more surface area to spread that weight and I recommend you do the same thing. In fact, Jackson actually sells the HDPE slabs that's actually upgraded from HDPE on their website. The last thing before I get into the, the two modifications I made for GoPro photography is what I did with the rear hatch. The rear hatch is big enough and I use this to store my cast net, but cast nets get wet. So I didn't want a bunch of wet, stinky, fishy smelling stuff on the inside of my kayak. So I got this very inexpensive round waste basket from Dollar Tree for maybe five bucks, cut it to fit, and then that fits in there perfectly. It also, if I wanted to put something else in here, keeps those items from sliding farther down into the two channels uh, underneath the kayak. If you don't want to use one of these and you don't have something nasty and wet, you know, you can get one of those laundry bag things that I showed you up in the front hatch and put it here as well. Now, let's get into the two hacks I did for photography. The first GoPro hack I did was I put my Scotty mount here in the brackets that the Jackson Cusa came with and I've got the appliance that I made out of PVC and the video on this will be in the description. And I can put this back here into this mount and now I can rotate this camera in pretty much any angle to get side shots. And it's basically just a Scotty mount with PVC and you're good to go. The key thing about this is to make sure you have enough of an angle right here to where when the, the camera uh, takes its pictures you're not seeing this bar in the way. So the other one is for front facing shots where you want to get the head. For the front shots I did one of my gear head adapters and I made this PVC assembly and in that I put a stabilizer and my camera goes right here. Now this can float and rotate freely and be reasonably uh, stabilized and level when I'm moving. I also have my lightning detector right here which is a critical piece of equipment here in the summer with all the pop-up thunderstorms you get and it actually works. Well that's it. I don't think I forgot anything. I've made so many hacks and changes that it's kind of hard to keep track of them. If there's something I forgot to do or you would recommend I add to this kayak, hey I'm all for that because it's all about comfort, accessibility, and a great day out fishing. Throw them in the comments below. Thanks.